but the <laughs> is buffalo grass. Buffalo grass is a direct threat to the swallows. Buffalo grass is a threat not only to our natural environment, but then also to our own human health and safety within the urban environment. I, I look at buffalo grass as being like the cancer of the desert. So buffalo grass was brought here about the 1930s for um, primarily cattle forage and for stabilization of the soils. Wait, go back. You mean to tell me that somebody thought it was a good idea to bring grass in for cattle? I bet that worked out real great. Uh, it's proven to be only marginally good at either one of those things over many years. And unfortunately in the meantime has spread throughout our community uh, along roadsides, out into open desert, into our alleyways and washes, basically all over the place. Buffalo grass has total disregard for personal space. It sees open space, it takes over that open space, it pushes out the native species, and it suffocates them until they're dead. So we first um, acknowledged or knew about buffalo grass being in the park in about 1989. In the early 1990s, we started um, using staff and volunteers to do manual polling. Uh, we realized that that effort was not going to keep up with the spread of buffalo grass, which is doubling about every two to seven years. So our local desert evolved with quite a bit of space between uh, trees, bushes, plants, and even the grasses tended to be very small and dispersed instead of being in large clumps. Uh, buffalo grass tends to fill in those open spaces between all the plants and outcompetes the native plants, actually pushes them away and soaks up all of the nutrients, water, um, and even can outcompete plants for sunlight uh, just by carpeting right over them. Buffalo grass really is a, a pest here in, in Tucson and southern Arizona for the simple fact that it uh, spreads much quicker than any other native plants in the area, um, grows much faster when we do have rains, and then also dries out very quickly once the rains stop and you end up with the, the messy, brushy looking uh, piles of uh, grass on the side of the road that are just waiting, uh, basically a fire hazard. And in the meantime, during that time, those seeds are also flaking off the plant and spreading, awaiting the next rain wherever they may land as well. By filling in those gaps, it has the potential to carry fire and an ecosystem that is not adapted to fire. And so it's bad for those two reasons. So the threat of fire and the competition it poses to our, our native plants. Buffalo grass not only affects plant species, but it has also become a huge problem when it comes to fires. It provides fuel for fires. It allows fires to spread extremely quickly, reaching temperatures that are hot enough to melt metal and kill anything in its path. So one of the challenges is that uh, it potentially can be quite a fire hazard from the lower desert all the way up uh, into the foothills where it could uh, bring fire either down from the mountains or um, a fire that was begun in the lowlands could potentially go all the way up the mountain as well. If there is a fire, then the native plants do not respond to fire. Um, they are not fire adapted, and so they do not re-sprout, they do not regrow. Uh, it's just an ecosystem that is unlike the forest where fire is, it is a fire adapted ecosystem. Some of the, plant, uh, the animals too cannot outrun fire or can't get deep enough into rock crevices to escape the fire. So there's high mortality of you know, desert tortoises whenever there's a fire or Gila monsters or snakes, those types of things. So it's not just the plants that it affects, it affects the animals as well. Uh, with the, the dense buffalo grass clumps growing across wider and wider areas over time, uh, it, the fires do spread much more quickly. Uh, can burn at temperatures up to 1400 degrees, so that can make, melt metal and burn just about everything else. We do work with community groups to provide them with either presentations, with uh, slideshow pictures, or hands-on training in the field where we actually walk around and identify 
uh, these are buffalo grass plants versus some of the other native plants that may not need to come out um, or that we may be removing just for aesthetic purposes or trimming them instead of uh, really focusing on digging them out and making them be gone permanently. It's of it, and it has the very rough uh, pieces where the, the seeds have come off. You can also see one of them that still has the seeds still on that. There's also a reddish tinge to the, uh, some of the stalks of the plant, which is a telltale sign of that. You'll also see sometimes um, right at the base of the, where the grass blades come off the main stem, a uh, small translucent hair. Many volunteer programs have been created throughout Tucson to fight the spread of buffalo grass. So Tucson Clean and Beautiful is working in partnership with Pima Association of Governments, the City of Tucson, Pima County, and a host of other community partners on the annual Beatback Buffalo Grass Day that is coming up in uh, January 2017. That event is intended to draw attention from the community to the fact that buffalo grass is a threat not only to our natural environment but then also to our own human health and safety within the urban environment. And we work with the community to identify where buffalo grass is at, teach people how to identify that within their own neighborhood, uh, work with uh, hands-on volunteer projects so that they can actually remove buffalo grass that is in their area, and then keep an eye on monitoring the area over the longer term to be sure that it stays gone. Volunteer efforts are fabulous, um, and we have a couple volunteer programs here at the park that um, we continue to use along with our herbicide program, and uh, we do have a second Saturday poll over here at the Rincon Mountain District. Um, and occasionally we have other um, volunteer effort polls like Public Lands Day or Beak Bat Buffalo Grass Day, and we do those over at the Tucson Mountain District. There are volunteer polls of buffalo grass all over Tucson, so if you ever want to really know what buffalo grass looks like, I suggest that you go out on a volunteer poll. Although the removal of buffalo grass is a daunting task, Many stay positive in the hope that one day there will be a future without buffalo grass. We've seen a tremendous amount of success with uh, neighborhood groups that have formed and uh, work on buffalo grass issues, among other types of cleanup and beautification throughout the year and over the longer term. Uh, there are probably a, a dozen or so neighborhoods where it's virtually buffalo grass free at this point, but that's based on the efforts that have been happening over several years. Yeah, a lot of people say that there, there's no hope for this, and I, I very much disagree with so many volunteers and so many people recognizing that it is bad, um, that there is hope, and we can be successful. We just need more bodies. Um, so I strongly encourage people to come out and um, join up on a, a volunteer poll for buffalo grass. Uh, yeah, and we're, we stay at it. We haven't given up hope, and I think there are... Uh, is going to be some renewed efforts at uh, Tumamoc and A Mountain to address it there because it's they're they're losing the desert laboratory, the oldest ecological study site in the U.S. So I, I think hopefully we're we're getting there.